players across the league, like really, really young guys that currently project to have critical roles in the NBA playoffs for teams that are potentially contending. Why are we talking about this now? It's important for those teams to understand how much they trust players like Marjan Beauchamp in the case of Milwaukee, Christian Brown in the case of Denver, A.J. Griffin in the case of Atlanta. These teams have to kind of make this determination now in terms of whether or not they believe these guys can hold up on the court in the playoffs. If they feel like they can't, they kind of have to make moves now at the deadline in order to potentially fix that, in order to potentially uh, help their team and their vets compete at the highest level. So the team that stood out most to me with this is New Orleans, just straight up, right? Whenever you brought up this idea, this is a great Adam Spinella idea, by the way, certainly not mine, to talk about this. New Orleans has three guys that are just really essential for them on some level. Dyson Daniels and Herb Jones are incredibly impactful defenders. Herb has been in this prolonged slump uh, as an offensive player this season. And it's going to be interesting to see if he can break out of it over the next little while. Trey Murphy has just been like a critical key cog yeah. for them because of his shooting. He's a pretty solid defender. He's the guy I kind of have the least worries about. Dyson Daniels is a real potential offensive liability as well, just given that he doesn't really like to take shots. He is just purely a ball mover. And I worry that teams might just go, okay, if you're not going to shoot and you're not really a threat to score, we're just kind of not going to guard you. And we're going to close off all the passing lanes for you. What do you think of where new Orleans sits right now and what they should kind of look to prioritize with some of these young guys? Like, should they, really just try and continue along the developmental trajectory with them and look at their window as, you know, this season, if these guys come along, but more likely next season and the season after when they continue to develop further, or do they look to move maybe one of these guys, maybe a Herb Jones and try and acquire something like a boy on Bogdanovich, which is a name that I think makes a lot of sense for them as a floor spacing shooter this is why this is a really tricky and important conversation to have now because you're talking about real like opportunity costs of like playoff basketball at this point. Yeah. So playoff basketball is very different than regular season basketball in the sense that you game plan so specifically for your opponent to try to take away their strengths and force them to operate through their shortcomings on the offensive end of the floor. You want to exploit them by saying, I dare you to do this. And if this is how you're going to beat us in a best of seven series, this is the way that we're going to choose that you do that. And and I've been reminded of this topic a little bit as we're in playoff football mode right now. I think that there's a question that gets thrown out a lot about the value of experience in postseason series, right? And we've kind of felt that a little bit. Obviously, injury for the 49ers-Eagles game played a factor but everyone was talking about Brock Purdy being a, a rookie quarterback trying to lead a team to the, the Super Bowl and how rare that was. To me, it seems like coaches a lot of times will excuse younger players if they don't do well and say, you know, we just kind of lack experience and this is a great learning tool for us. But when things go well for them, they're saying, well, you know, experience doesn't really matter. We just have really good players who are going to go out there and figure it out. So I've never been able to figure out a straight answer or a feel for really does experience matter in some of these settings, particularly if you have one of those weaknesses, if you have something that is easily exploitable in a postseason series. And I feel like at least for two of these guys on the Pelicans in Herb Jones and Dyson Daniels, they absolutely do. They are going to be forced in a best of seven series to counteract teams daring Herb Jones and Dyson Daniels to shoot. And when you look at the rest of the roster construction for the Pelicans, in playoff settings when they want to maximize minutes for their best players and keep them on the floor, you're going to want to see a lot of Jonas Valanciunas and a lot of Zion Williamson. And if that's the case, you need floor spacing. You need shooting around them. You need to clean up the lane so that those guys can both be impactful on the offensive end of the floor. 
I don't know if you can really survive for long stretches of time with a guy like Herb Jones on the floor as a result of that. You can look at his postseason minutes last year, and he played a lot of them, but that was in a series without Zion. Everything changes when you put Zion on the floor with more than one non-shooter. And that's what really is going to worry me for the Pelicans. So I agree with that. The thing that... The thing that I feel like I still don't have a great like general feel for maybe is the way to put it. I don't know yet what this team is when all of Zion, CJ and Brandon Ingram are on the court together. That trio has, according to play by play stats again, Daryl Blackport's great site. They've only played 172 minutes together this season. They have clobbered in those minutes. Yeah. They have won them by 14.4 points per 100 possessions. They have a 122 offensive rating and a 107 defensive rating. Ooh. Like they are kicking the shit out of teams. And like you get all three of those guys on the court together. And then you have Larry Nance if you want to play small. You have Jonas if you want to play big. That's your four. And then you might only have to have one of these guys. Maybe you go Trey Murphy. Maybe you go Dyson for defense, you know, maybe you go, you know, Najee Marshall because you want Najee out there. Maybe it's Jose Alvarado. If you want to try and speed teams up, Uh, they just have so many different options to be able to bring. If all of these guys are healthy and on the court together. And if you trust this 172 minute sample that we've seen that says, okay, no, this seems really good when these guys are out there, like this team can really play. So in that vein, it's hard. I think I would be patient if I was new. Me too. Me too. And I think I would trust the young guys. I would not move all that it would take. So Kyle Metz in the comments on YouTube, for instance, just said Herb Jones, Jackson Hayes, Devontae Graham, 2027 Milwaukee first for Boyan Bogdanovich and Rodney Magruder. I think value wise, that's like not that far off in terms of what Boyan should and will go for. I don't think I would do it if I was new. Like, like, and I actually am someone that like really thinks that like Herb Jones is a player that they should explore moving Mm because I struggle to see the fit with all three of those guys plus Trey Murphy plus Dyson Daniels. And I just value Dyson and Trey a little bit more than I value her. Right. And and frankly, they have Najee Marshall as well. Who's turned into a really good impactful defender. Um, You know, really valuable slasher for them gets out in transition, does really impactful things. So I'm good with them using Herb as a trade chip. Like I, I think that it's a reasonable, smart move to do so. I think he will have real value around the league as well. Part of me just says, be patient with this group. Like, can you play both Trey Murphy and her Trey Murphy and Boyan together with that group? Like, can you play CJ Brandon Ingram, Trey Murphy, Boyan Bogdanovich, and then Zion? Oof. I don't know. Maybe. I don't really think you can get away yeah. defensively at the yeah. rim with that. No, I think Boyan is like, much better than Trey Murphy is right now. I don't know if that's true next year. Boyan will be a year older. Trey Murphy will be a year older and more experienced. Much better defensively. Trey Mur- like I think that it will get closer and closer as this thing goes on. So I think I would just be patient. I know that that's like a shitty answer for the Pelicans fans, but like, I think they have every reason to be patient because again, we haven't seen their best three players on the court together all that much this season. If they get CJ and Zion and Brandon on the court all together at once and they start to roll teams again, like I think they're probably going to, if I'm being completely honest with you, I think they're going to regret like giving up future assets from this tool chest that they have, which is just absolutely enormous for a guy like Boyan that you know, probably plays this year in real minutes for them, but I don't know if he is like a future, you know, he's definitely a future rotation guy, but like 
probably not a future closing lineup guy for them yeah. after this season. Uh, if you really believe in Trey Murphy, the way I believe in Trey Murphy, uh, if you believe in Dyson Daniels is like a perfect compliment for CJ McCollum in the backcourt in the way that I believe he is. So I would be patient if I was new Orleans, I, I would trust that you're going to get healthier. Trust. You're going to get Zion back. If Zion's out, you're fucked anyway. So yeah. like it, it's, it doesn't matter almost what move you make. Um, so I, I would just wait. I would be yep. patient. I would not make a move if yep. I'm New Orleans, which is not exciting, but, you know, I, I would hold off. I agree. I will and say, again. like, if OG and Anobi came available, that's one that I would have real interest in. Yeah. Um, but I would not have that much interest in Boyan personally. 